suppose you have your web application and you opened it into a browser and then in mm -hmm. another browser you opened it and uh, you try to log in another browser also so how mm -hmm. do you control the concurrent active session using spring security so basically uh, it generates the token for per user so for per token i think i'm not sure how it internally manages but it is creating a token and on the basis of that token if that user would try to access the system again uh, basically he won't be uh, won't be able to access um, due to that token is already in action maybe i'm not sure because in one of the system i have worked with single sign on in this scenario we uh, so in single sign on it this is what happens it allows you to have only one session per one browser from another browser it is trying to access maybe something is getting checked which is um, i'm not recollecting it was happening okay. something on key clock side where it was not just verifying a token and only one token would be granted but i'm not sure what would happen in two browsers in between json and xml what would be your preferred data exchange format and why i actually prefer the uh, json because uh, that xml is xml that is a, a bit yeah complicated because there are some tags and all but json is yeah easily readable than uh, the xml also that json is actually language independent but xml uh, xml uh, is not acceptable by the all uh, yeah, all language and parsing json is actually easier than the xml okay uh -huh. and also json supports array and xml does not support array also so suppose you need to load balance your application so what do you prefer you will load balance it on the micro services i mean on java level or on aws level a spring boot also you are going to the use on that a spring boot and uh, in java level aws side also you are going to the use on that so aws is like a, there is a, like a multiple ready made uh, functional is there some uh, ready made means like some pricing related some customer related if you want to customize something like a zone wise uh, zone wise some traffic if you want to de uh, divide like a multiple availability zone so at that time like a load balancer we are going to the prefer on that thing in a aws so what i mean like if one task is there and that task like a uh, like a ec2 you are going to take the ec2 one instance is there yeah. one instance like a, it is not going to the store the like a um, millions of the record so you are going to load balancer you can use the load balancer you create the ec2 ec2 instance one to n you are going to the create on that as per the like elastic load balancing you are going to the use there is multiple instances you are going to the provide on that so that way also you can do and cross site like a load balancing also in a spring boot if you want to use a spring boot so is a ready made uh, recently we are going to implement it through the uh, a spring boot there is a integrated with the aws there is like a some uh, uh, some cloud load balancing some dependency is there that things we need to the add on that and then after that we are going to the create that the uh, plugins that plugin like a uh, the that dependency some uh, some management is there and then after that we are going to a starter wave and a starter like a test related or there is a load balancing so that things like a, a spring boot like a cloud uh, um, a starter load balancing is there so that things we, that dependency we need to add on that then okay. after that like a we need to extra effort on that directly you can write the service classes like a controller we are going to define and is that the control we are going to call on that can you tell me how you can implement jwt token for that you have to use uh, some annotation is there okay. you have to add a dependency in bomb.xml and the configuration enable authorization server and implement mm -hmm. that adapter classes you have to implement adapter classes your main class suppose you want to configure something a security con uh, configuration and that one extend web security configuration adapter classes and uh, there is uh, configure method okay, based on that we can restrict your apis configure method you have to write that where exactly you will use enumeration can you give any example enums enumeration enum you call them in short enumeration where can you use they are constant i will give you the hint they are constant yes yes constant uh, they constant provide the some no, number to you like yeah so we create an enum class and okay. by default that is public static final so that means every variable created inside that will be a constant so we use them with the fixed things fixed things like suppose in our code we are using days okay sunday monday tuesday wednesday yes. we go for enums instead of creating a string and then 
using that again and again and that string uh, the code can be modified so instead of that we can go for enum yeah how do you convert a integer into a string integer two like okay. might be two dot, dot two string no there is a one more method which is called value of value of okay yeah. okay so dot value of that. okay uh, everything converting a string to integer kind of things rare, rarely okay yeah but it is it is also needed okay so suppose uh, like i have a method okay and mm -hmm. that method is showing file not found except uh, that class has a subclass as well and that subclass in that subclass we are overriding that method and that method is showing io except okay so i think this will give an error okay and because uh, io exception file not find exception is an io is a type of subtype of io exception okay. and when whenever we are doing an overriding so what happens in the parent has we can define or uh, we can define the io exception but not you know, we cannot uh, minimize the size as in like if we have the io then we cannot give that file not uh, sorry vice versa okay what is immutable class uh, immutable class are things where which property you do not change at runtime like after it is created. So once you create the immutable class, you are not supposed to change the property inside of it. Uh, if you need to change the property inside of it, you need to create a new instance of that particular class and then uh, change the property in your class. So suppose you are building a software which is based on the share market. So uh, for the money, what what type of data you will use? Money, for I currency. did not. Uh, I did not get the scenario. I mean, uh, what does it mean for currency? I mean, so software related to share market, you need to create a lot of variables related to currency. So, which data type you you will go for? Uh, for uh, inserting new entries, uh, like if you have a timeline of entries. So, in that case, uh, we can use linked lists because you can create new objects and you know keep linking to it. If it is in Java. Else, like there are time related databases which are also available that we can utilize that uh, specializes in these operations. We have tree map and tree set in uh, collection. Are there any concurrent version of these? Not uh, utilize any concurrent version for collections. So there are concurrent hash maps and concurrent list, I believe, but I have not utilized them. Uh, also, I don't know about uh, tree because, uh, I've, as I mentioned, I have not utilized tree. They are not, I mean, uh, utilized anywhere for me. So I am not able to find a use for them. Okay. For test purpose, do you have experience working with in memory databases? Yeah. Which one? H2. H2DB. Okay. Yeah. Okay. How you are testing your application? Okay, so we are not using the framework like GUnit, etc. So the scene, okay, so what we usually do, let's say I am developing some, let's say, new changes, okay. So first of all, I have to check it from my side. And let's say then if my testing is over, okay, so then what we have to do, we have to push that code into the testing environment. And then there are some, okay, so there are some clicks that basically test the U, okay, that uh, there are some clicks that uh, test the UI part as well. And then there are some, that basically there are some clicks that are, that are checking the, you can see that the REST API as well. And after that, uh, we basically push our code to the production. And what are the other features you use Java 8 while coding? We are used uh, Lambda function and uh, default methods in your uh, interfaces and then uh, method references and then uh, mainly we use the stream. Yeah, these are the basic things we are used as part of Java 8. We also used uh, you know, script check. I think in Java 11 or something. Uh, Java 11 or Java 13, I don't remember. There is uh, something called enhanced statement where you can use uh, Lambda expression. Enhanced for loop, you mean? Enhanced for loop. Even you have enhanced switch statement. You can write, usually we have switch case and then you have the statements and then break statements. Yeah. But in the in case of NR switch, uh, you can directly write in one line statement like case, string, colon, you write your uh, lambda function, arrow mark function, and then you write your expression. That's it. That kind of case statement we have used it. In your application, you have to take some values from the, so there are two properties file. One is application properties, one is application hyphen test property. And mm -hmm. some of the values used in the test cases has been picked from the application test properties and many of the values are has been picked from the application properties so how do you do that while running your application how will you make sure that some of the properties you will pick whichever is used in the test cases which that should be picked from the application test you use add profile annotation in your office add profile you mention your profile name so that particular class will know that particular property based on the add profile annotation you 
ओके ओके कैन यू टेल मी हाउ गार्बेज कलेक्शन वर्क इंटरनली इन जावा सो गार्बेज कलेक्शन इज बेसिकली अ पार्ट ऑफ मेमोरी मैनेजमेंट ऑफ द जेवीएम सो इट ट्राइज टू लुक फॉर द डैंगलिंग ऑब्जेक्ट मींस द रेफरेंसेस और व्हिच आर नॉट पॉइंटिंग टू एनी ऑब्जेक्ट स्टेट इफ ऑब्जेक्ट इज फ्रीड फ्रॉम द द स्कोप then garbage collector tries to free that memory so for example if i am declaring a local variable inside a method so when that method call is finished so garbage collector try to free that memory occupied by local variable so it tries to keep on looking for the object which are not in use and try to free that memory but uh, we can't assure that garbage collector will collect or free up the memory at calling a specific method can you like force empty the memory can you force it no no we can't force 